G'day punters, welcome back to the Punters Academy. Uh, John Walter from RacingWatch.com today. How are you? How are you going? Big weekend, John, with the Everest and long weekend, long weekend. I thought uh, there weren't too many imbeciles out there with five-year-olds and nine-month-olds for an Everest day. Just let's Just put you. it that way. Just you. Just me. Fair enough. It was a good day though. Well, I was glad I was at home. Uh, it wasn't crazy. It was like I reckon the first year was crazy, but they sort of catered to kids and stuff. Whereas. Second year, I think they probably realised that it wasn't really a kid's day. Everyone was too smart and having babysitters, so they didn't really have much entertainment for them. But yeah. the crowd wise, it was nowhere near as bad this year. I saw a lot of people say ran out of food and big lines and stuff. I didn't see them. But anyway. How'd the good. internet? Thing. No, perfect. Perfect. I was doing heaps of stuff out there in between races and whatever. No, it was fine. Yeah, just the, the ATC stuff. I didn't use the like their free Wi Fi or whatever. It was fine. Okay, great. Yeah. So we'll start off with the uh, two year old open, John. Um, Time is precious. Mm. Nothing flash in the time or sectionals. Pretty ordinary, in fact. Well, did you, you did sort you of want to go like if you if you pull the day apart, it probably wasn't any. Definitely was not a disadvantage to be in front on the fence there. No, and and it just looked like a one of those two year old race, races where this this thing this horse found the fence, found the lead, and sort of won a pretty average looking race. Um, post go ran about around a bit, sort of never sort of got comfortable early. Had to make a few mm. adjustments in the run, and um, that that kind of wasn't ideal for him. But it was yeah a bit of a it's a lead up for this million dollar race in a few weeks, uh, which is why it's important race. But uh, I know the winner's gone for a spell. Um, Postcode will probably get there. The one that ran second, he ran right. second in the gym crack or the bloody breeze well, plate. Probably, probably plate. a bit of improvement. Yeah, I'd say they probably, if anything, they've made it backed off him to make sure that they get <coughs> to the next race. So I wouldn't be potting him too heavily. But yeah, it's not it's not a race where there's anything with a big flashing light on it anyway. Right. Okay. The two thousand meter race in race two, we saw a pretty slow tempo set by Maid of War, uncontested mm. and. Um, yeah, no the rest was history, and so that was an, yeah, everyone kind of going leaders, leaders after this race. But you had a two-year-old race that was pretty average in the yes. first, and then a, a race gifted to Mate of All, who's, who's racing really well. Like it wasn't entitled to win three starts back now, so two starts before this, uh, where he sort of got a, a needle eye gap and and charged and won. Uh, I think Kembler or somewhere yep. like that, and then sat yep. outside the leader at Kensington and did a good job the other day. So this horse is flying, but and was in good enough form to capitalise on what was basically a, a gifted race. Have we had enough um, of uh, Humboldt Current? Yeah, I, I was really surprised by how, by how short it was. Uh, I know it was a pretty skinny race on paper. I think, um, uh, like, it, it's it's just just an honest battler with not too many attributes to win to put races yeah. away. Is it, that sort yeah. of thing. Like, I thought Angel of Heaven was the that was its race, but it was even probably first time up to two thousand. Maybe just had a little bit too much to I, do I with. I couldn't get it as short as the market. I had a quarter. No, one. but it's it, there was a horse that had kind of looked like it had two two really soft runs getting ready for something and this felt like the when the betting uh, yeah. I had some pretty heavy betting owners involved with this horse that yeah. uh, Ron Wanless and when when the money came and just was consistent well then I thought well today's obviously the day they've they've set it for got um, out got out in the fair late a bit yeah and and, and definitely had a chance you could see Nash was right in the job oh, like yeah, he put it right into the race there on the turn and it, he was there to win the race and the winner was just too too solid with the with the run that it had, but you know, and again, like nothing really behind it was there. Like Duchess of Lennox, everyone's sick of it now. Mm -hmm. uh, Johnny Vinco is just just a horse. Well, it was um, it was actually well supported in official betting, Johnny Vinco. Yeah, and you know, like it's just um, it, it's two it's two runs are okay. Like it had everything go its way the day it won at Canterbury, and then yeah. the start after that had a few excuses. So, and it was that sort of race. It was you, you sort of had to go looking for something, and and really the obvious was the leader. In hindsight, and when it was left alone, it, yeah, it all makes sense now. They bet eight dollars or something. In the yeah, way. I was a little bit surprised because it was the one race of the day that I was allowed to uh, tip in with no par or clerk. I, yeah, right. I found first and second, <coughs> so it was well a good done. result here. But um, yeah, but nothing too exciting moving forward. He couldn't. He could find another race for sure. The first and I think first and second can are definitely in good enough form to find a, a race to win next start. Righto, so we had the uh, five and a half furlong uh, highway. Wish it was about 900. Wish it was about Wish 900. Was 900. Yeah. John, John, you had the leader in that? Yeah, yeah, it was a bit of a cheap thrill. We they, they, yeah. they had about 10 minutes of, of horses ducking and weaving in the gates, late scratchings, and we were in, we drew barrier one, and the one thing we didn't want was barrier one in a 16 horse field, cop barrier one. So then we're first in, there's 10, 10 horses unloaded, bloody late scratchings. Our horse came out, was vetted back in then another horse bloody got down it was absolute madness but he gave us a sight led um led probably by three with about 200 to go or 250 to go but once he wasn't three in front with 100 to go i kind of 
knew our fate was sealed, but he battled And look, I mean, you know, they had, had a soft enough time in front. They went about 1.6. Definitely, and, and especially considering the control he had. Like, he had two or three lengths behind him. Yeah. Um, so he had his chance, there's no doubt about that. Uh, Bossy looked in trouble behind the gates there. The yeah, he was grumpy. He was on that, the, that, uh, the Drake, who's, who's, well, then he was in Sydney. He was a known barrier rogue. And mm. whether, like, he'd been much quieter up north and whether it was coming back to Randwick up south <coughs> or what, I don't know. He used to bloody... He flips over in the gates as his thing, like literally right. backflips, and I, I think that's what he did. So Boss was probably very, 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 very lucky um, to obviously be able to pilot yes, yes, yes later in the day. So, mm, sure. um, but as a, as a part of a race, I don't think there's much to learn there. Again, no, it's just one of those. So. so a bit of a wash, the first three races on the card. Interestingly, uh, we've got the Reginald Allen next, and uh, Akari got the job done off a fairly moderate tempo. Um, I backed Betcha Flying, which um, charged it not to be. Yeah, it was. It was a uh, few few smart people wanted to be with Betcha Flying for me. I, I thought Tim's horse would go do better than it did here. This special snap, and he yeah, I, sort I of got pretty good too. control, and, yeah. and with still single going forward, and he was sort of outside him, and he looked super confident on the turn. So I don't know whether uh, special snap pulled up with any issues or anything like that, but it was certainly a, a little bit disappointing. The, the winners. Like he chased home a very heavily backed horse of Chris Lee's first up um, with no luck and then really had no luck at Wyong and wasn't entitled to win and sort of got away with it and then obviously got a big step up in grade here. But uh, not surprising, very talented horse. Uh, just just hadn't really had things go its way until today and, and, and really didn't have it go all her way again. So like a, as in tempo and things on paper. So there's definitely upside to... Akari going forward, uh, even though that is a listed race, she's got black type. She could she could sneak another race over the carnival. And good to see her run out a strong fourteen hundred. Um, that'll open a few more doors going forward. But it was a, a funny race where like a few horses failed. Yeah. But there's enough in the you know slow tempo and time to say there's there's some upside to probably first and second. Betcha flying's uh, uh, it could probably sneak sneak to Melbourne or something. You'd say it's it's yeah. not 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 out of its. Uh, wheelhouse to follow to find a nice little similar race 1400 meter listed race at flemington or something for it right okay to kosciuszko we saw handle the truth uh, atone for a bit a uh, bit of a butcher job there first up on the inside yeah and I remember taking the, the, the good odds that day funny. and uh interestingly the kosciuszko john's gone significantly better than deprives race uh the sydney stakes in terms of time and time sectionals over. okay um yeah, certainly for the. Uh, I mean, obviously for Drive Deprive ran a better winners sectional. Yeah, but um, frightening. Overall, Handle the Truth has uh, recorded better figures. What do you think about it? Yeah, it was a funny. It was a funny horse. I wish I hadn't have seen it down in the stalls. I would have lost confidence. Not that I would, even took part in the race, but it's it's um it's a funny looking little horse that was sort of cowering in its box in amongst all these things, and it was only because it was too up from screenshot did I see it. And a couple of people sort of said, "Oh, do you like the thing?" I said, "I like kind of like to handle the truth," but. Looking at it is this quite little, he looked like a little scared little mouse yes. in the box. So um, obviously when the blinkers go on and then the race came around, this horse switched right on. And what I liked about his preparation was he they didn't he didn't mess around with him, um, tried and he threw him in a couple of uh, solid races to get him fit yep. and, and he was ready to go. Um, probably the difference between him and, and say Victorum in the finish was just that, just a bit of race fitness, bit of match practice. Yeah. And they were like, I think second, third and fourth were first up and all pretty classy horses. I'm not really sure why uh, any of them went into the race first up, but um, easy with hindsight. But I doubt that too many people will do that going forward. You can see it's, it's hard. Like you just, you wouldn't want to go into an Everest first up. Uh, you wouldn't want to go into a Kosciuszko first up for mine because you've, you've yeah. got, especially if you've got time to plan it. So uh, the beauty of Handle the Truth, he, he was pretty certain he was going to gain a slot. He aimed him up for this race and had him primed to go on the day and i think that was the difference it was obviously no disadvantage to be up on speed which was his pattern and uh you know he's like he's run good time as you say too so like there's no fluke in the win and uh you know that that's probably his uh grand final um, i don't know where he goes like he's not a, it's not really a race where probably victorum and noble boy and those horses that were first up are more likely to go on to, to targets yeah. during the carnival somewhere i saw there's a 1400 uh, in mind for Victorum, might it be one of these million dollar races, gongs and friggin', I don't know what they're, hunters and gongs and there's million dollar races everywhere now. So he'll, he'll pop up somewhere, Victorum, and he can improve. And uh, probably Noble Boyle, once he gets out from a mile or something like that, he can do something. So, right. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a funny race. <laughs> it, from a, it was a great it was a, it was a great race as it worked, as a concept. 
Yeah. Um, as a form race, it'll be very difficult because they'll just split everywhere now. Yeah, they'll split. Yeah. Mm. Uh, deprived, the Ramwick specialist got away with the <sighs> Sydney Stakes and ran the uh, best winners last six, four, and two of the day. It was kind of one of those horses where, like, if you were wanting to bet in the race, he was easy to find because of his record and things like that. But then mm. the pattern of the day sort of looked like it was half knocking him out or making his job quite difficult. Didn't look a race that they, um, well, they went a lot slower than I probably thought they would. I thought they'd go at least even time, you know, with your sort of pretty quick horses involved. But you've got them horses like Brutal and others that it might not have been their grand final. It wasn't really the race they were looking to go out and bust themselves in, which was going to play against the private Drew Wide. And wow, it chimed in, didn't it? Like it's yeah, yeah so it like its best best winners last section of the day uh, off a slow tempo come from an impossible nearly position and nearly hit the front. Great job. Well, nearly hit the front too early, which is the most incredible thing, and, and may have switched off and laid in under pressure late. Um, it's yeah, definitely no knock, on, possible knock on the winner. I, uh, I I had a sneaky go at um, Fiesta at the eighteen dollars uh, in the morning and yeah um, I thought it ran ran okay and it didn't have the best of luck in the mm, race. No, and again like hard for it. It's a, I think I won that the uh, English race first up over eleven hundred last time in, but a hard at like against these season horses. It was um, not like as you're saying like you're taking eighteen dollars, you weren't taking four dollars. So I'm yeah. not knocking you betting into the race, but <coughs> it was a tough task and she's definitely definitely run very well. Uh, brutal. Okay, like I just I yeah. wouldn't I'd be penning it and just saying next time's it's gold. Don't totally different race. Take. The setups just was not ideal for him. Um, who else would go forward out of that? Home of the Braves going well. Easy Eddie redouble. These horses will end up in these sort of yeah. gongs and bloody hunters and things like that. And they you know they'd, they'd, there'll be some depth of this form uh, as like there's Red Zell Stakes, which is sort of the natural follow on for the sprinters, and then the others go to obviously the Golden Eagle in a couple of weeks. I don't think there's anything there other than probably deprived that could shape up in a, in the Red Zell Stakes, but um, Brutal certainly can in the in the Golden Eagle. Uh, the rest of them probably need to drop back a ticking grade. Yeah, I'd, I'd say. say so. Yeah. Um, they don't want to. They don't want to be heading to where the some of these Everest horses will be backing into. So, yeah. Again, they, they'll split. So it, it'll be strong form, but it'll just go in different directions. Okay. So. Uh Obviously, the big race next. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Got the job done. Thank God. Um, good result for me. Nice. And uh, hopefully, a few people caught on to the uh, the tip early. I, I I had a good bet also on Arcadia Queen, which I thought was disappointing <coughs> um, on face value. But when I go back and look at the times and the figures and everything else, yeah, uh, I think it was just really put into an, an impossible task. I was watching the replays and I got pulled up by Brent Nabdala. God bless him; he just loves pulling me up at any opportunity. The um, which I normally give a lot of um, to people out there, but I actually sort of half confused her late at night thinking she'd had the blinkers put on especially when she jumped as cleanly as she did and went and like he drove earmuffs, her into that yeah. yeah it was earmuffs but it was and it was yes 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 that obviously had the blinkers but um yeah it was great tactical rides on every horse in the race i was thinking you know, if they could go again arcadia queen certainly wouldn't be ridden like that and it probably was the undoing of two horses in the race that jumped too cleanly and that was uh, uh arcadia queen and and um eliza she, she sort of she probably wanted to be last if she could be, and if she had a missed the start, she probably gets the back of yes, yes, yes. Totally different race for her, and same sort of thing for Arcadia Queen. If she's back in a similar position to say trekking Santa Ana Lane, you can only imagine that she's winding up and running into it. So, you know, hindsight's a, an easy thing to work with, and just great tactical ride on. I would have had my life on it that, um, that they would have tried to go forward with yes, 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 back to 1200. Blinkers, blinkers on, on 53 yeah. kilos. Glen Boss is known for like the way he rode Colding, just getting it into a far well, more forward I position. I think on Wednesday they had planned to do that. Yeah, okay. And then there was the tactic change that came through uh, re, re yes, yes, yes. So they're going to ride it conservatively. Yes, yes. Um, we all know that sometimes these tactic changes at Wawa don't always pan out the way they suggest. No, and... But but and still, like he, people go, he, oh, he had inside information that Nature Strip's going to go for. Like, he had, what, he had, no he, one ever seen Nature yeah. Strip ever race in its life. Where well, did they where, want it to be? Where else are you going to be? No, the and, and, the te and the actual tempo was pushed, not by Nature Strip, it was yeah. pushed by Red Zell, Sunlight, and um, Chris Lee's horse in her time kicking up the inside. Well, and, and It was obviously, it was 6.7 above leader 
to the 640. Yeah, it's not as if they've slowed down, so, really. So, so they haven't really slowed down. No, they've it's just, just been gone a, fast a very, and fast and faster. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so... And they've run like 11.2 above yeah. um, track and distance par, so... But you couldn't, you couldn't accuse Waller of sending Nature Strip out there no, for his other runners. No. If anyone pushed the tempo, it was the three other horses that, that made Nature Strip work that little bit extra to cross. And then he's just maintained an even tempo. Yes, yes, yes. You'd have to say he had the, the right run, but impossible to knock him in any way, well, shape, or form. Sectional. He's gone like a rocket. Right, it went like yeah. a jet. Like if you ran it again, he'd say that, the, and, and swap the barriers around, Santa Ana Lane's in the finish, you know? Like his, his effort was enormous. Mm. Trekking's probably run to its absolute best and, and done a, a great job. Piarata, again, barrier one, was probably the other horse that yeah. was a bit sick and Classic Legend was held up. I don't think he was as sick as some of the others. Um, you know, he was, yeah, he was different, but he, I think he'll appreciate the 1500. It's a, it's a hell of a race, uh, sort of going through it. Have you got that field there again? Sorry, so, well, Sandra will go to the, the, the 1200 on the last day of the, uh, what, Emirates Stakes, or what's, I don't know what day it's called now, three weeks, um, 1200 metres down the straight we'll anyway, Flemington, whatever it's called. Pierrata, I'm assuming he might go to something like that, or, or uh, he, he'd be a good candidate for a similar race, Red Zell. May go to the Red Zell. <coughs> Nature Strip may go to the Red Zell or to that 1200. Trekking's got the similar options. It could go to the Red Zell or there. It's classic Legend goes to Golden Eagle. Ten Sovereigns, I'm not sure, may go back on a plane. Elise's got the same options. And Sunlight's had a pretty busy time. So, yeah. And in her time, second up, they like to space their runs. Like Katie Queen goes there. Yes, 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 may go to the, the Coolmore or the Paddock. I, Coolmore looks a good race for it. Well, now. it's tempting, isn't it? Because yeah. obviously it's it's proven as a stallion now that it's it, it, it will be a stallion. It's regard now it needs a Group One, a Group One. Uh, you know, like if oh, if well, Evil Act goes to Manicata, it's fair to say that I think that that. Oh, well, it is a Group One. I think, and, and I think they're going to treat it. It's a Super Group One, as it passes. Uh, like the yeah. the breeders will treat it as a Super Group One, but they need a Group One, whatever. This is so you're getting three year olds, twelve hundred, which he's proven at. You know, I don't know if he's run down the straight to be honest. While he was down in Melbourne, I can't, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. But um, obviously, no, no problem him racing in Melbourne. He's been down there. If <coughs> Everwack goes to the Manicato, which looks nearly certainty on Friday night, does he back up in the Coolmore? Likely not. So there's a tick for yes, yes, yes to run. He's going to have to run against Libertini, exceeding to his beaten twice, and uh, maybe a horse like Cosmic Star, uh, Cosmic Force. So it's attempting if he comes through it well, you'd, you'd probably expect him to line up. I assume. I, yeah. I don't. I don't see too much downside to it. And uh, you know that they, they took the risk by putting him in the Everest and wreaked enormous rewards. It's it's quite kind of funny to when you think six million prize money is probably quite irrelevant to the overall picture for what that horse uh, increased its value by on Saturday. So uh, I don't think it'd be the last three-year-old colt you'll see in the Everest. No. What price bivouac had it gone there? In fact, Reprice it, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, t it's it's interesting because he would have you would expect him to have been closer to the speed, which would have made it more difficult for him. Um, if he drew a gate and had that soft run that say Arcadia Queen got, you could see him certainly going bang bang and being the one to run down. Would they have got to him? I don't know. I would love to have seen him in the race. I'd love to have seen him in the race now even more. Uh, Arcadia Queen's too good a mare to sack off that. Oh, it's embarrassing some yeah. of the crap that people have been going on with saying that she failed and that all her forms weak and hollow and this is like for, for one all their forms a mile beyond before this she's preparation out on super hot speed super hot speed which she's never done like i don't know 1618 meter right she's come from eight and ten off the lead now she's like four off the lead in a ramwick 1200 track well, record she said, time she did sit closer in perth but it not was, in all of her races is what i'm saying no, like she's no. not her pattern's not the established shake, that she's the pace shake was more more um, soft. suitable for yeah her. soft yeah that's right so she's gone she's been ridden upside down in what, the fastest <coughs> race ever run at ramwick over this over this track and trip uh, and then got a massive check you know like she's probably got a heart big enough to battle away into fourth fifth even if she was gone when she got checked the other day oh in that race so mm. you'll never know that but yeah. um you definitely couldn't potter like no, she for she's sure. i agree yeah there's there's and i don't want to pot any horse very, out of very that solid race. in the betting line yeah there were there were a few horses that were always going to struggle uh like you're on speed you know your your red zells sunlights uh, that were chasing, always going to be chasing a hot tempo with with really classy back markers that were going to get the soft sit on them. So they were always going to struggle uh, in this race, but they're going well enough. To, like you look, Sunlight's just come out of winning two weeks back or three weeks back, beating Santa Ana Lane, who's probably a good thing beat here. You know, yeah. all things being said, and you know, so every, some, everyone some, in the some would say that. 
Some would say that. Uh, yeah, like exactly. Well, you, know, mate, you can't. That you can't knock the winner because he's yeah. he put the race away three hundred from home. You know, yeah. like so. It's just uh, if any. I'm saying that. Yeah, the, probably got there too early and inflated a bit. Maybe. He did. He did. You know, that's in, in. Well, he's run one seven three. How quick can you bloody go? Like mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like he's done a great job. The second horse has done a great job. <laughs> Everyone's done a great job in this race. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad that it lives up to the hype. I can't believe how wrapped up I've got into it, and it's probably for me. It's, it's, it is my Melbourne Cup because I love sprint races, you know yeah, what I mean? Your, and they're more exciting for me. Your uh, boys did well. They ran, what, um, third, third and fourth? Third and fourth on the roughies of the field. Yeah. They did a really good job. And they, like, as I said to Tim, jo- jo- Josh joking around, three weeks ago I was looking at Wagga to see whether I could book him in a few rides there. You know, that's just how it works out. Like, Josh struggles with a lot of these handicap racing and things to get rides because he can't ride to... Uh, light, all of a sudden, you know, his shadow hero comes through, you get the late booking for trekking, who we had the association with for, you know, he's picked up bloody 70 grand or 60 grand or something in in, in uh, jockey's fees for running third in Everest, and you, you'd see him interviewed after the race, it's where he just won a Melbourne Cup, you know, it's that, it's that much fun to be part of these races for these guys, and that's what they do all year round, so racing can go from, look at Glenn Boss, you know, like, he, he, a month ago, you would have Thought he was on his way to Eagle Farm to become part of the retirement brigade up here, and now he's winning, winning Melbourne Cup favourite. You know, like it's just it's a yeah, he's, it's, he's too good to ride off. It can go both ways the, this sure. game for sure, but you've got to ride the highs and needless and, to say, um, you can eat this battle week. through the lows. Oh yeah, yeah, I can eat, I can eat. Oh, not yet. They've got to get the clean swabs in a couple of yeah, weeks. You got to go. We'll, we'll be able to eat in a couple of weeks. So uh, we saw the Craven Plate, and uh, look, they've gone. Super quick here, 13.8 above to the 600. Um, Happy Clapper took up the role after sitting wide early. And uh, yeah, a lot of people might think Sam Adout changed tactics, but Stampede was never going to let it be a, well, a, a bit of, true race. Yeah, that's right. And I, I heard Tim after the race basically saying that he couldn't go with them. Like he, it, he wasn't a, it wasn't a... Sam Adout doesn't have to wasn't speak, a choice. He couldn't go fast enough to get... Now, yeah, Happy Clapper... Led in this race. So run me through. Saturday. I've heard half a dozen people tell me it was the ride of the day. Well, it was it was a good decision, I think. Um, this but same race, the same above, race a couple of years ago, and I'm still doing. Do you say that was the ride was a great ride, or do you say the horse has just run out of its head? The horse has run out of its head. What a, like I'm not saying it was a bad ride because he was caught wide. He had decisions to make, and he's made a decision. He made so a that's decision. great. He but committed. Am I saying it's a, a, a winning ride? Well, possibly. But is it the best well, ride I've ever seen? No. If it was start going slow and he did that, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. But they're going quick, and he's used the horse up in a time where he was already being used. He's like overused him. Not saying it's Look, a bad ride again. I, I, I the did horse have is just the horse is the run of, of the day. I had a little bit of a doubt at 2000. Yeah. I've still got Massive. that craven plate from a couple of years ago when... When Blake, he chased home, couldn't beat classic uniform or well, whatever it was. Well, we know why he didn't win. Like he jumped he jumped, sat third. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The moment he, he jumped well and, and sat third, yeah. Blake started to restrain, 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 just dragged it all the way back into the field. Why? Because I, just, it, because, I don't remember because what happened. I just remember Tim out in front battling away and just... Well, he made, he, made, rough. he made a sustained run, or tried to make a sustained yeah, run. Yeah, I do remember him meters. having to come back. And, yeah. Like, it was just, like, I mean, we all... I, I honestly thought... Every now and then, but I, I mean, love the clapper. That, that just goes to show that Happy Clapper has that versatility to lead, to be on pace. I mean, we saw Happy Clapper take up forward positions against Winks and... Oh, and he's, so it's, he's a funny, he's one of those horses that as his career's gone on, he's actually shown more speed. Uh, Someone made the comment, uh, good man, made the comment that... Happy Clapper may have been the only horse on the day that was owned uh, outright by one person. Yeah, that, that could be right. Apart from bloody oh, the sheep from Scrubby Creek owning the whole of Godolphin, I guess. But yeah, the, yeah, um, yeah, I don't. I, yeah, I wouldn't wouldn't be surprised if it was like so, I, well, yeah, well, apart from maybe the highways or some bloody thing like yeah. that. You wouldn't imagine that there would be too many horses that are owned by one people one person these days. There aren't many. It's it's um. Well, we can't we can't make any excuses for the others. I mean, Sam Adout was been racing. Sam Adout, he, he's just he tried his guts out again. Tally had his chance. Probably cost him the race having a bumping duel with Lifeless Ordinary down the straight. But in saying that, he's had the speed to like he's had everything to suit him apart from the bumping duel. Your man nearly um, got the money with Tally. No, that's right, and I need it more than they do. So it's, it's disappointing, you know. Very like Michael Thomas has got plenty, you know. Like he doesn't need any more. <coughs> I'd, I'd written Happy Clapper off, to be honest. And and the best thing about him was yesterday. Like I was sitting there just having a look, and he paraded incredibly. Uh, he, I don't know what had happened leading into his first couple of runs back this time, but whatever they did between his last run and this run really worked. He, yeah, he, he looked great, great job. and great you know job. he deserved the win as much as I would have preferred Tally to beat him, just because 
of Josh. Um, yeah, no, he, he deserved the win. My God, he deserved the win. So your man was just absolutely gifted, Hush Rider. Yeah, great, yeah. great win. I mean, great, 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 great right? But it looked a bit. Uh, I know that uh, Hush Rider is the sort of horse they always thinks a better horse with a bunny to chase. But obviously, not when you're going at track gallop speed, which yeah, is which is what he's below. doing. I heard that he ran like eleven flat or something from the six to the four or something like that. That's, that's going to that's going to put six lengths on most stayers. Well, six six to the four. Mm. Interestingly, um, outside the leader section of that race mm. between the six and the four, the fastest. So I'll, I'll just read these others out on mm. the day from race one. So we've got minus, this is from the 600 to the 400 litre, minus three and a half, 0.7 above, one above, minus one, 0.4, 1.1, 0.4, 1.2. The last race, plus 1.2. Mm. Hush Rider, plus 5.7. Yeah, in a 2600 metre race. That's where the race is. Yeah, went. so. Right there. Yeah, he's, he's off and gone and he's done a good job. Made it impossible. Yeah, it was the ride and the, the horse is going well. He, I know Tim, after he rode it last up, was very disappointed that rain arrived. He thought he'd just about win the Metrop on a dry track and where he sort of, the horse just spins his wheels in yeah. that, especially under full pressure. And, you know, he got the dry tracks that day and handed the race and the rest is history. I mean, I was against Gallic Chieftain at the, at the price, just yep. mainly. Um, yeah, well, it was a massive difference it, it to last seemed, up, it, wasn't it? It seemed to have a, 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 a strong position. Even Tumble Open, all those horses were, you run that metrop a few times, I think you get a few well, I think, results. I think that there was some of you that come play with me might go better on the dry track. Mm. Yeah, uh, fair enough. What it's been racing against. Uh, Cariff, the they've, they've, been, they've tried to get into a Caulfield Cup, I know, from the start of the preparation. So they've obviously got an opinion of him. He's a, he's a guy who's going to uh, continue to improve with racing and maybe next prep. But it's good to see that he ran out the 2600 strong. Yeah. Yeah, he's a horse of the future, arguably. So he, he can do something. Cars no chance back in the field. No, no, no. Yeah, and there was a few. Like, even Patrick Aaron ran well again, which is weird. His last two runs have been really good after he looked like he'd been... You know, ready for the bloody, mm. ready, not, I won't say that word after this Channel 7 yes, report. Yes, Let's just say he was, that. he was ready for a paddock uh, with lots of lush grass. Lots of lush grass. A Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so the last race there, we've got Cascadian who got the job done. I couldn't possibly find it in the market uh, at around... Yeah, oh, Glyn's just right. really, um, just struggling to win races at the moment. You know, when, when riders get in that... Um, I'm not saying frame of mind, but when they're just, you know, this is not a horse that you want to find a rider that's not winning without regularity, if you know what I mean. He looks like he needs a bit of help, and that was what probably would have put me off this horse. Um, How did you think of its chances going into oh, I've loved the horse, and I've like I've wanted to find it all preparation, then it sort of inside gate in the Epsom. Forgive, 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 you know what I mean? I thought he was always a run behind. So this was an attractive target. I know he had a bit of weight, but I couldn't find him. I, yeah. definitely, I, can't, I couldn't find him now, you know what I mean? Well, Penske, um, Penske was absolutely truckloaded. Truckloaded, I mean, yeah. It, it, it looked... It looked to get the really soft lead. Yeah, and that um, was the funny part. It didn't... Um, I mean, they've gone 8.7 below to the 600. Yeah. Juniper, Robbie Dolan just got lost. Yeah, and and, and, well, and and Penske was the first horse beat. Yeah, very disappointing. It was very weird. So the whole race um, didn't make a lot of sense after the race, if you know what I mean. It was kind yes. of weird. It's like the, the horses you expected to run into it off a fast tempo were the horses fighting it out, but they didn't get their fast tempo. Yeah. Weird race. Okay. Any... Particular ones there? That you no, to Cascadian may. I, I reckon he's been a run behind, and if if Godolphin think enough of him to send him down to a, I, I wouldn't be thinking like Cantala or something like that. Maybe something a level below that that Group One. If he found a mile race at Flemington, he might be dangerous. Even back to fourteen hundred, I wouldn't mind him. Yeah. Um, in a big field, I think that's his go. Uh, down in the weight, something like that. He's he's an interesting horse. Right, so that's Sydney uh, all done. What we might do is we've only got a, a couple of questions today, so we might come back in part two and review the meeting from Caulfield Saturday and yep. do the questions, John. Yeah, sounds good. Cheers. Thank Done. you.